has uh, logged in to our 3D avatar platform and uh, watching us live uh, on the first day of Pharma Leadership Summit. Welcoming you all. Uh, I would like to call upon our inaugural session panelists and speakers and I would now uh, ask Dr. Ravi Gupta, the founder and CEO and editor-in-chief of Elets Technomedia Private Limited to give the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Namaskar. I am uh, Ravi Gupta and uh, I am Editor-in-Chief of uh, eHealth Magazine and uh, before I start the uh, session, uh, uh, let me uh, welcome uh, all of our inaugural speakers, uh, Mr. Dana Patel and uh, Mr. Manish uh, from IDBS and uh, let me request uh, first our uh, uh, eHealth uh, Magazine Editor, Karthik Sharma to uh, uh, give a welcome uh, uh, note and and then I will uh, proceed with my address. Karthik, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ravi Gupta. And uh, uh, I welcome uh, in this inaugural session of uh, ELET's Pharma Leadership Summit 2021. This event we are organizing on a 3D virtual platform, Avatar, which is a high-tech platform having uh, all the uh, facilities for audience to watch uh, the event, to do a Q&A, to network with each other, and to also having virtual exhibition of our clients. So uh, today also we have a virtual exhibition of our ELETS uh, Expo is there and the uh, IDBS uh, exhibition is there. So uh, we have started getting audience uh, uh, into uh, the uh, and uh, it will be a huge audience uh, throughout the day watching this program. So I recall, uh, I request all of you to please keep asking questions, to keep uh, doing queries, and to keep um, 
visiting the exhibition, which is a virtual exhibition, but you will enjoy it. So um, the Pharma Leadership Summit is, uh, I think, the uh, talking about pharma and talking uh, around pharmaceutical uh, is the need of our. When we see, uh, even in this COVID pandemic, uh, the pharma is in, in the epicenter of uh, the discussion and the uh, things going on around the COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic, whether it is about vaccination or it is about the uh, essential drugs uh, to treat COVID-19. And um, uh, along with that, uh, various um, other aspects of pharmaceuticals. So it becomes a very right time to organize such, an, um, uh, such a discussion uh, where leaders of pharma industry um, are participating and discussing on various different aspects, whether it is digitalization of pharma industry or whether it is the, the issues and the opportunities and challenges related to supply chain, packaging, uh, IT and automation, and um, um, uh, views by CIOs, CEOs, uh, these operation heads, all of them um, uh, you know, uh, will be discussing uh, these uh, next two days about uh, these uh, various aspects of pharma industry. So uh, uh, with this, uh, I will um, uh, request uh, our eminent speakers uh, for this uh, panel discussion uh, to uh, also, uh, before I request Dr. Ravi Gupta to address, there is a magazine release. So in the presence of uh, uh, Mr. Dara Patel, Secretary General of Indian Drug uh, Manufacturers Association, IDMA, and uh, uh, soon we will be joined by uh, Mr. Sudarshan Jain, uh, who will be secretary, who is the uh, Secretary General of Indian Pharmaceutical Alliance and Senior Advisor of Apex Partners, and uh, Mr. Manish Manakchan, uh, who is Commercial Director of IDBS, and uh, Dr. Ravi Gupta, Founder and CEO of e uh, uh, of Elex Techno Media and Editor in Chief of eHealth Magazine. So, uh, Dr. Ravi, if you please allow me, can I announce the launch of eHealth magazine? Sure, sure. Okay. Please. So, I just give you a brief about uh, eHealth magazine. From last 18 years, uh, eHealth magazine is uh, writing about the uh, enterprise of health, uh, whether it is, um, and especially uh, the uh, I health IT. Uh, so, uh, from 18 years, we have written dif on different aspects. We have covered almost uh, all top leadership and also the ground stories, the stories of last mile uh, of the healthcare ecosystem of the country. And today when healthcare is uh, uh, one of the most, uh, you know, uh, talked about uh, sectors and uh, uh, we think our need and our contribution becomes more important uh, in, uh, you know, putting up the voices of healthcare industry. Uh, so uh, taking the pharma industry uh, in, uh, in the core of our, this next issue, a special issue on pharma industry, uh, the pharmaceutical sector. We have uh, uh, came up with this special issue for this month, uh, which is around patient centricity, the epicenter of pharma innovation. So this is a special issue of eHealth magazine. And uh, you can see the uh, flip uh, pages uh, of this magazine. And uh, we are uh, honored and we are glad that uh, this magazine is getting released in the presence of eminent dignitaries of this industry, whether uh, it is of, uh, it, uh, whether they are Secretary Generals of IDMA or um, Indian Pharmaceutical Alliance or uh, 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 the Commercial Director of a renowned organization, IDBS. In their presence, it is our honor. And uh, in the presence of large audience watching us on a 3D virtual platform, here is the release of eHealth Magazine special issue on pharma industry. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, I also appreciate the team, editorial team of eHealth Magazine uh, to come up uh, with this issue. And also thank you to all the authors who have contributed uh, their writings in this special issue. And uh, with that, I request Dr. Ravi Gupta to please take over. Thank you, uh, Karthik, uh, for the great uh, introduction. And uh, let me welcome our uh, eminent speakers, uh, Shri Dara Patelji, who is the Secretary General of IDMA, and uh, Shri Manishi, who is uh, from IDBS. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, uh, 
Let me uh, tell you briefly about uh, ELETS and eHealth. ELETS is an organization uh, which was uh, founded in uh, year uh, 2005. And uh, we started this uh, uh, magazine eHealth in the same year. And uh, for the last uh, 16, uh, 17 years, uh, we have been like regularly uh, publishing this magazine. And our aim has been to uh, uh, highlight the, you know, uh, uh, innovations which are happening in the e-health and the overall pharma sector. And uh, we have been organizing several uh, conferences and exhibitions across the country uh, before Corona in the physical format and in last one year in the digital format. And we have been uh, collaborating with the various state uh, health departments, pharma departments, and also the central uh, health ministry to help uh, build up uh, industry and government collaborations also. And also uh, we have been including the academia in a, a big way in our conferences so that uh, there is uh, academia, private sector and the government sector collaboration which is flourished. And uh, when we uh, conceptualized and announced this uh, Parma event around the, uh, the three months uh, back in January, we had uh, no idea that in the April end, the uh, uh, pharma sector will be in a, such a big way at the center of attention of the, the country and the globe. And uh, the importance of uh, this industry for uh, well being of the citizens is uh, like uh, cannot be uh, explained and emphasized more in every uh, new channel in every newspaper in every uh, portal uh, wherever you see you are are uh, like uh, uh, seeing the uh, demand and the need of better and more resilient uh, pharma ecosystem in the country and in this background of covid-19 this event is being held and uh, it's an honor to have an eminent uh, uh, a list of speakers in the whole of uh, today's program. You can see the whole agenda on our website. It's called pharma.electsonline.com. And uh, uh, speakers uh, from uh, various uh, pharma companies and overall uh, the pharma ecosystem are represented in the uh, today conference. And I welcome all our eminent delegates and our eminent speakers to or discuss the challenges and opportunities for the pharma sector in the country. So uh, let me uh, hand over to my uh, colleague uh, Pratibha to uh, take this uh, program forward. Uh, Pratibha, over to you. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, I know uh, my uh, former speakers have spoken about the summit and how important is uh, you know pharma, but I would like to emphasize is uh, to bring the leaders and experts of pharma. We have brought in all the various segments under one umbrella in the summit for the next two days. We have tried our best to get in everybody, right from API experts, packaging, and uh, you know uh, automation and IT CIOs. Uh, the first day is going to be full of, you know, uh, it's going to be a CIO a symposium. So uh, this is what we have tried to do. And uh, for the uh, we all know for the past one year, the Indian pharma industry is on the center stage. And, you know, it has got more significance globally uh, because of COVID-19. So uh, I would like to also give a special mention here who helped me personally to build up the agenda and who had also looked into certain integrities of the you know uh, the two-day summit to shape up so well so from the industry i would like to mention mr chakravarti avps global ambassador world packaging organization sir i know you'd be watching us now thanks a lot for help helping me with the agenda and the speakers and i would like to mention mr ganesh uh, ramachandran cio of alcom and uh, ravi kala cio of anthem biosciences also who's right now hospitalized because of covid uh, 
19 uh, wishing him speedy recovery for that and also i would like to mention the idma team uh, who is also our supporting partner here but helped us with a lot of things you know i would like to mention uh, mr melvin who had you know helped us whenever we called them late nights or in the early mornings they have helped us do it so it's i know this is not the time to uh, give thanks but uh, i would uh, definitely uh, like to mention their names without them this wouldn't have been possible and uh, now uh, uh, with uh, permission of dr ravi gupta i would uh, like to invite uh, our uh, special guest for the day uh, mr dara patel uh, the secretary general of idma to you know uh, give a special address on digitalization of pharma which is very much needed today Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Pradeepa. So, first of all, I want to thank uh, Elets uh, Technomedia for organizing this wonderful show. Uh, the two days lineup is simply excellent with good topics. And I'm glad you uh, thanked my friend and brother Chakrabarti. He is very dear to me and uh, authority on packaging. And I also want to thank my uh, admin and account head, Melvin, for all the support he has given you. So, Mr. Ravi Gupta, Mr. Karthik Sharma, Mr. Manish uh, Manikchan, all the speakers and uh, <coughs> sorry, the panelists who are going to enlighten us over the next two days. Well, the pandemic uh, has taught us a lot of lessons, and uh, one major thing is that uh, what emerges is that digital is an idea whose time has come. Uh, you need to digitize. You need to take. Uh, advantage of that otherwise you'll be left behind you know earlier there was a phrase which was coined that either you perform or you perish especially in the pharma industry where there's a lot of competition though the pie is very big but competition is huge so today if you don't catch on the bus of digitization then i think you have to be prepared to diminish your sales your profits your activities everything so let me just briefly tell you how we got over the last pandemic. Uh, there was a total lockdown, as you all know, and we were caught unawares. So it took us a lot of time to make the authorities understand what is important, how pharma is essential. And when they just allowed the pharmaceutical industry to get out and perform, uh, people are allowed to travel. At the same time, the ancillary industry was in, a, in trouble because uh, the authorities never understood that they are equally important. So then we had to again explain to them that the corrugated boxes and the bottles and the foil and everything else, the raw material is equally important. Transport is equally important. Loaders are equally important. So with great difficulty, but close interaction with the government, various uh, ministries like our own ministry, Department of Pharma, the DCGI, the local FDAs, uh, the police authorities, the CDSCO, and the entire office of the DCGI, we were able to perform so well that I am really glad to inform you that as of end March last year to early April, the production capacity utilization was just 20 to 30 percent. But with this type of a close interaction uh, with not only the industry and government, but the associations, all the major associations got together. We worked very closely, especially IPA, OPPI and IDMA, and we brought it up to the level of 60 to 70 percent by end April, mid-May, and from mid-May to end May, early June, it was almost 100%. So all I'm trying to say is uh, with close interaction with the government and when we are on the same side, uh, things can really work. And that's what made things work in uh, <clears throat> the pharma industry. And then you saw that the demand of the drugs went up, repurposing of drugs took place, increase in demand came up. So there was a lot of challenge. <clears throat> Sorry. So now, you know, the new normal earlier, we were having a system of WFO, which is work from the office that came to WFH, that is work from home. And now it is WFA, which is work from anywhere. I mean, wherever you are, because of this technology, because of this webinars, you can work from anywhere. And that's what is going to be the order of the day. <clears throat> so today, we find that webinars are the order of the day, virtual meetings, virtual training programs, <clears throat> uh, AGMs of companies, shareholders meetings are also on uh, uh, 
virtual. Television interviews take place. You are sitting at home. You are in your office. You don't have to go to the studio. Digital payments are happening. Digital is, as I said, an idea whose time has come. Most healthcare companies, pharmaceutical companies have adapted to it. And uh, they have understood it and the importance of digital. Now, the COVID crisis has led us to virtualized healthcare practitioners marketing, virtual peer to peer sessions, medical webinars, multi customers video conferencing, and uh, treatment uh, protocols. You know, even the doctors today are preferring virtual meeting with the MRs, and there are very few personal visits. Same thing is happening with the patients. Uh, there's a virtual interaction and the doctors prescribe accordingly. So practically everything has take, is going the digital route. Like remote patient support, which is, which is happening. Uh, remote prescribing due to social distancing. Clinical trials are a big challenge today because monitoring the participants, hosting them at labs and uh, various facilities are uh, being a, a big challenge, posing a big challenge to us. Digital technology, artificial intelligence is what is coming up to the fore. Even in the government circles and in industry, all applications are now uh, e-applications, whether it's the customs, whether it's the DCGI, what have you, patents, everything. And government approvals are also coming uh, from uh, the e-system virtually. That's exactly why, uh, you know, today uh, business is improving. We thought everything will remain at a standstill, but no. In fact, pharma industry is doing extremely well. And we are truly today the pharmacy of the world because we not only take care of our patients here, but even globally. There is a little hiccup today in uh, products like Remdesivir and all that. <clears throat> but again, as I said, with close interaction with the government, this will also be history. And in the next couple of days or a week or so, everything is going to be smoothened. So, uh, as I said, pharmaceutical digital marketing is what is going to be of main support because unless, <clears throat> see, we can manufacture to the maximum, but unless you have that marketing support and selling and doctor support and the support from the chemists and druggists and various other trials, the, the chain is not going to be complete. So uh, contract development, marketing, supply chain technologies, Everything is going to play a very important role. And uh, we are glad that everybody is uh, jumping on this uh, digital uh, system of functioning. And together, I think we are going to succeed. We are going to do better. And the pharma industry has great future. Uh, of course, we will ensure that our prices are very competitive and they are very affordable and the medicines are accessible. So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity given uh, uh, Elates Techno and uh, all the organizers and uh, I wish the uh, deliberations every success and we are sure at the end of the two day uh, seminar that you're organizing everybody will go back uh, enlightened and share their knowledge with their peers and with their associates and with their colleagues. So thank you very much and all the very best. I want to acknowledge the presence of my friend Sudarshan Jain. Uh, welcome Sudarshan, great uh, to see you here. So thank you very much once again and all the best. Um, Daraji, uh, thank you. And uh, Pratibha, please, over to you. Yeah, we would like to now uh, listen to Mr. Sudarshan Jain, the Secretary General of Indian Pharmaceutical Alliance, Senior Advisor of FX Partners. Welcome, sir. Uh, thanks for joining in. And we would like to hear on you on how you know uh, the pharma sector is uh, going through the second wave and the rel reliability of medicines which we would like to hear upon over to you sir so you need to unmute yourself yes yeah i am unmuted can you hear me hello yes sir yes sir hello? yes sir please go yes sir. i am unmuted can hear you. yes Okay, uh, so thank you very much, Pratibha. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. Thank you, Manish. And thank you to my dear friend, uh, Tara Patel. And I was hearing his comments. And uh, both of us tend to meet every week, which shows the greatest collaboration along with OPPI, that how do we ensure the availability of medicine. 
all of us are going through the biggest humanitarian challenge at this particular moment. Uh, this is the crisis we never faced before. Yesterday, India recorded cases of 3.8 lakhs per day and 3,600 people died yesterday. Every life is important and no one is safe till everyone is safe. And what is important at this particular moment, global cooperation, global solidarity to meet this challenge. And the great example is in Indian sector, whether it is government, whether it is industry, whether it is customer, whether it is association. All of us are applying our mind to get over this crisis and move forward the agenda of healthcare. Uh, there are three aspects of this whole area. One is the science aspect, second is the sustainability aspect, and the third is the societal aspect. As far as science is concerned, uh, we fully don't understand the virus. On 8th of February, we said that we have conquered this virus and there were only 8,000 cases. But today there are 380,000 cases, 40 times more, right? There are double mutant, triple mutant, UK mutant, Indian mutant, Brazilian mutant. We are trying to understand the science part. But the beauty of this whole story in 343 days, to be precise, we have been able to develop vaccine. And this is important contribution of science. So we are understanding this variant. We are trying to conquer this variant. And the science part is important. Second aspect is the sustainability part. There is a question of lives and there is a question of livelihood. How do we balance it out? Uh, then there is a social aspect, social distancing, mask wearing. We are human beings. We like to interact. How do we take care of it? However, what we I like to say that here, science and technology, along with humanity, will be winner. And what we need to do is get the balance between all these aspects, science, technology, and humanity. And the human aspect is collaboration should continue to be important. And we have to work together because we have to remember that virus does not understand geographical boundaries. Virus moves from one place to another. And no one can be safe till everyone is safe, right? We in urban market cannot be safe if rural markets are not safe. US cannot be safe if India is not safe. So every human being and every life is important. So we have to be humble and we have to find the answers. <coughs> I will also like to say that every crisis offers tremendous opportunity. And the greatest opportunity what has happened in this kind of scenario is the adoption of digital media and keeping focus on the patient to conquer, to find out answer to disease. And what I like to focus on is what are the digital interventions which have taken place and what will happen going forward, which will change the way we live, the way we work, uh, the way we interact, and the way we try to service our patients. So that will be the focus of the attention. First is, given the fact that this hit us around one year back, and I will quote Satya Nadella, that in one year, in terms of digital technology, we have achieved what we couldn't achieve in last 10 years. And the catalyst process will be much faster. So one is the planning process in the organization. Today, it is an integrated planning process. Marketing knows what the production is doing. Production knows what finance is doing. So there is integrated ERP system, which are adopted very, very fast in the organization. I used to work for Abbott. We took time to implement the system. But today, there is a social dimension. There is a technology dimension. And there is a dimension focused on patient that we have to make our products available. Like say, previously, if the forecast change used to happen, everyone will shout in the organization that why marketing people are changing the forecast, right? Why there is a demand all of a sudden has gone up in Chennai and uh, Gorakhpur uh, when that demand was not given. But today, those boundaries have finished and everyone in the company is responding because the demand is changing. Who could have imagined that our cases will go up 40 times? I couldn't have imagined in the month of January and uh, uh, Tara and me and uh, KG happens to talk, the demand of Remdesivir was around three to four lakhs and people were talking of expiry for Febi Pravi. But today the demand is 90 lakhs of Remdesivir, right? And who could have imagined that this can be done? 
but what what has happening because of the technology because of the erp system and i will recommend once again spend on technology ahead of time because technology always pays right the companies which have spent on technology ahead of time have spent so overall planning process itself has undergone a fundamental change as far as the organizations are concerned and every one is adopting by heart and soul technology previously everyone will say why should we give this figure everyone will like to hold on the things so there is a social aspect of technology there is a technical aspect of technology there is a mindset aspect of technology and all is being taken together so that's point number 1 second is if you see the overall work from home like right? everywhere it is not important that you have to be work from home or work from anywhere like today this conference uh, what we are having today is although it is virtually it has got good points it has got bad points uh, dara and me don't have to travel we can see each other on the face we can talk to each other whenever it is required i don't have to go to inma office i don't have to go to oppi office we interact i don't have to go to delhi if we want to have a call like dara and me will remember that if we want to have a call with the secretary they work 24 by 7 we ask for the appointment next day and the appointment is given so travel is not required if i want to talk to usmta office i can have a call with them i don't have to travel to washington to work from home work from remote place interaction through remote place tremendous increase in technology and some of these things will stay and there will be hybrid model which will come in also the implication is how do we evaluate our employees in this uh, given situation there is more empowerment to the employees there is more focus on outcomes so what will happen the technology will change the performance management system will change uh, the devices which are given to every employee safety profile will be changing and cyber security will become very very important so that that is a second important part and lot of companies have to think of this is going to be a permanent feature the question of cyber security the question of performance management system the question of evaluating the empl employees and the question of employing the uh, uh, question of uh, question of empowering em uh, employees the bureaucracy has to go away and humanocracy has to come in the new term which is being used by mckinsey and other places bureaucracy should lead to humanocracy which is a combination of humanity human side of Uh, the enterprise as well as technological side of the enterprise so that is going to be a big change going forward third change which will be going to be forward is the how the way we interact with the customers uh, previously there used to be standard communication going to all the customers the concept of the visual aid which existed in the healthcare industry those days are gone the doctor is not you can't first meet the doctors right you have to keep the distance with the doctor doctor is not interested in parrot like approach so what we call is icu approach for communication is insight content and user interface again the use of technology again uh, to get going there what does the doctor want what should i talk to this doctor how should i shape the product so getting insights and again technology use of getting insights monitoring his behavior evaluating the thought process of that disease through social media Uh, studying the process and then designing the content and using the right kind of interface which becomes so icu approach of field communication field management becomes very important uh, like say google has come out what is the movement levels in different cities they come out with the data every day and we can find it out ourselves like say today i am asked yesterday how many places are people feel people can work today so based on the google data which is again in the public domain we can know what is the movement level which is there what will be the incidence of disease covid cases in that particular place places how can i allow my field people to work in different markets again a tremendous use of technology as far as field operation is concerned so manufacturing operation hr operation field operation financial operations uh, audits audits are taking place virtually right you don't have to go it is not possible to go to a particular place there is a tremendous infusion of technology in audit like say year ending is there uh, you have to close the books uh, you have to do the audits you have to come out with balance sheet there is no choice uh, to postpone this because i will be demanding that this is done and once we start pressurizing this once we start following it on it it happens so whether it is finance part of the business it happens the other part which i will talk about the customers as before i go to the customers which is the most important part 
manufacturing. Uh, we are talking of contactless manufacturing today. All the quality operations, you don't have to go on the shop floor to know what is happening on the quality. All the systems are interconnected. And in fact, today we have been doing study with, uh, with BCG, Future of Work, with McKenzie, we are doing a lot of work. How do you build contactless organization? How do you integrate all the systems so the human contact is less? It becomes uh, there is more empowerment, there is more transparency, and you are able to manage your operation relatively better. So there will be there is a lot of infusion as far as manufacturing technology is concerned. As far as R&D is concerned, I heard, I joined uh, Dara towards the last part of your presentation, the use of AI, the use of uh, genomics, uh, and developing the products. Who could have imagined that you could have developed vaccine in a year's time, right? Emergency use authorization, government is looking at every system. We have been able to develop product in a year's time. We will also see some of the therapeutics option which is coming in very, very soon. So you are able to do clinical trials faster. You are able to do genetic studies faster. You are able to do, uh, you are able to do development of the product faster. And the whole development cycle, whole cycle of marketing will undergo a transformational change going forward. And we will see repeat of this in every area what we are uh, talking of. Last part, which I will talk in terms of technology is the telemedicine. Uh, we don't have to go to doctor every time. Um, electronic record system will strengthen, although it will take time. Still, some of us want to go and feel, get the feel and touch of the doctor, but there will be a hybrid model. Uh, you can share the report with the doctor. Doctor will advise on the phone. Some of the disease, yes, surgery can't be performed at this moment at home, but there will be a lot of increased consultation and teleconsultation will become a big thing going forward. The last is also the use of technology in the distribution chain. At this particular moment, I don't know how the stocks move from company to the patient level, right? the digital backbone of the supply chain is relatively strong because each distributor uses a different system each retailer uses a different system uh, patient connectivity to a retailer is relatively low we call on the phone and give the orders all this over a period of time although we are at early stage it will start changing so whether it is planning whether it is manufacturing whether it is distribution uh, whether it is uh, communicating to the doctor and whether it is making the product available. Whatever the value chain of the customer or the patient is there, we will be able to service the patient in a much better way. I like to say technology has to be centered on patient. Technology in isolation can't work. And we have to see the human aspect of technology. How technology will help the organization to service the patient better. Technology is not there to take the job of a person. Technology is to eliminate bureaucracy and service the patient better. And hence, whenever we're talking of digital system, whenever we are talking of infusion of technology in the organization, we have to keep patient in mind and we have to make sure and we have to communicate again and again to every employee in the organization that it is there to help that patient for whom we exist because patient is the reason of existence of the organization. We are going through tough times. We are going through very challenging times. We are seeing the loss of lives of our dear ones, near ones. Many of the times we cannot help them with the patients, with the medicines. In fact, I also feel helpless some of the times when I cannot help each patient with the medicine because I don't know where my medicine is available across the country. Uh, although I have produced it, but my members don't know where it is available. Hopefully we will move forward in this journey. Uh, we know it is tough time, but science, technology, humanity, collaboration and communication will help us to move forward. And I'm sure we have lived, lived through many situations. We'll pass through this situation also. And on behalf of the industry, uh, whether it is IPA, whether it is OPPI, whether it is INMA, whether it is any company, whether it is any employee of this, industry i would like to assure all stakeholders that we are there with them and we are committed 24 by 7 to take care of this crisis and contribute our bit for this ex exercise thank you very much for your attention thank you thank you thank you
thanks a lot sir it was actually yeah we are going through very tough times and everyone's prayer is that we have to move ahead and sail past through this as soon as possible so uh, we would uh, the next speaker i would like to call upon is mr manish manish chand the commercial director of idbs uh, welcome mr manish uh, uh, can we have your presentation thank thank you so much pratibha ji and thank you everyone uh, on the panel distinguished guests eminent speakers uh, and i couldn't agree more uh, to my earlier speakers in terms of how easy it has become for the industry uh, the government the manufacturers all of us to come together in this challenging times to help that end patient requiring a drug or or a, a hospital uh, bed or any other thing and and we could really see that happening on the field as well so i would really like to thank the associations and everyone who made this possible uh, in this challenging times of of curfews uh, social distancing etc to still make this happen so so thank you so much sir for all your help and contribution in getting uh, to us where we are today so moving on to to my session i think it's it's very much in line to what my earlier speakers talked about uh, the use of digital technologies right and and my my presentation would be more focused in terms of life sciences r and d uh, as we are looking at uh, from from that uh, lens and eyes today so my name is manish again uh, i'm the commercial leader for idbs and and very glad to be talking to all of you who are listening to this uh, virtual presentation or what we call uh, the new normal uh, hopefully all of you and your loved ones are staying safe and and taking all precautions uh, to remain safe right it's definitely challenging times uh for our country and we should all be strong together and absolutely support each one of us uh where where we can and where we should right so i think together we will overcome uh, this challenge what we are seeing today uh, my presentation primarily uh is is on digital transformation in life science r and d and we are extremely glad and thank you for elits uh, for organizing this wonderful session over the two days and and we are really privileged to be part as a digital partner uh in this in this conference so the term digital transformation right is is definitely a bold vision smart factories process automation and really driven by real time data to constantly ensure quality and efficiency in the products we deliver and the journey towards this vision also starts with improving the process understanding characterization of it and supported by real advanced technologies such as high throughput process development advances in science and analytics which is happening about it so in my presentation i'll share about digital transformation uh, keeping in mind the journey the challenges and how we as an organization are partnering with our customers uh, to make this possible and get drugs and therapeutics much more faster to the patients as we've seen uh, we saw shurajan uh, jain sir talking about how important and how easy it was for us to kind of get and and, and manufacture these vaccines in a very short period of time and a journey would be to continue doing that across the domain so let's get into specifics of digital transformation right so i think this is a buzzword which most of us uh, typically talk about or keep hearing about this over and over again but do we really understand what this means and over the years digital transformation has typically meant many things for our customers right it could be as simple as eliminating paper or those books uh, which are being used across in the lab uh, to digital processes or it could be empowering all our staff to work remotely and again as my eminent speakers highlighted how can we enable or empower our staff to work remotely uh, and still get the work done in a very productive and an efficient manner or digital transformation can be automating the entire process and and systems to elevate the organization in terms of new levels of productivity as well as efficiency a google trend analysis if you look at it over the last 15 years uh, compared digital strategy and and digital transformation and basically highlighting the difference between the two and and interestingly you will see within the last 5 years digital transformation has clearly had a much bigger interest over digital strategy so this really makes us wonder what what's changed uh, between these two so actually the difference is rooted in the recognition that digital transformation is not just about technology while most digital technologies provide possibilities for efficiency gains as well as well understood that if digital initiatives do not adapt improve business processes then going digital will simply magnify any flaw uh, thus reducing or limited the value we would get out of it so in brief we are we will end up executing a very poor process 
very efficiently. So it must be centered around our business problems, be centered around patients, be centered around the end outcome of what we are looking to achieve. The way we've looked at digital transformation is a journey uh, which you embark on, right? So it's not just a one-time activity which you would start and end. We would need to constantly evolve and learn of what's happening uh, at the end level uh, to kind of get on to this journey. From the slide, you would see that the digital enabled organization, right, which typically starts off by having a fragmented of softwares being used uh, with manual, just mimicking the manual processes into a truly digital world. And, and then you would go on to the right side, which is a complete and digitally transformed uh, organization, which are actually able to generate insights uh, from the data being generated in the R&D process at an enterprise level in a very efficient manner. And, and the process of this starts off, if you look at capturing data, loads of tons of data being generated uh, at the bench level, at, in the processes, in the experiments from instrument in a very structured manner. Extremely important as we move into this is the entire ecosystem integration to eliminate any of the manual processes causing transcription errors, which may happen using. And then moving towards contextualized data and then eventually moving towards modeling predictive or, or what we may call in other words as artificial intelligence or, or machine learning. And, and there is a journey of getting into that in terms of starting with capturing the data uh, in the right way so that we could make meaningful analysis uh, out of this. Let's look at some of the data from this ecosystem more carefully, right? At, at a very operational level, uh, from a day-to-day -day experience of scientists who are working in the development space. Uh, last year, we interviewed a range of around top 20 pharma biotech organizations and found that a consistent number of users found it hard to get access to data from the multitude of systems in a timely and traceable way. Almost 30 to 40% from the slide, you would see, uh, spent uh, on data and document administration. Many were actually repurposing some of the systems not designed to help make the decisions, uh, including limbs and other ELNs, and, and covering gaps by creating in-house offerings or simply using a plethora of tools like, like Excel templates or Word documents. Firstly, it cannot be right that these decisions of spending crores of rupees uh, in the development and the discovery of this project are still based, made based on data actually buried in Excel templates or in USB sticks or shared drives and emails. If we make data harder to get, we will drive to simple conclusions and will end up making biased outcomes and trusting to luck. It's, it's purely on human nature. And interestingly, from a data, what, what was very surprising that only 4% of the data is actually typically reused in any of the further analysis thing. So we still have a lot of scope to learn from our previous mistakes, et cetera, so that we do not repeat them again. And digitally enabling these systems will definitely help us get to that vision. And the last part is that we are also creating a very poor disconnected user experience of, of these heavily customized offerings all glued together uh, with in-house software patches and making really hard things for us uh, basically extremely difficult to get done. And, and if you look at further into one of the aspects of this entire digitalization and data management, and also during later part, uh, we do have a, a topic on data integrity basically the number of warning letters being cited across over the last few years from FDA. And, and the consequences of an ineffective data management could basically be delay in time to market, extremely very critical for us in these challenging times to ensure that we are getting vaccines faster uh, uh, to, to our end patients so that every one of us can be immune to it, right? And, and this from an organization perspective, also being first to market, especially for a generics business, we really want to ensure that after the IP protection, we are going really quick and, and capturing that market. If, if the companies are definitely publicly listed, there's poor credibility and market reputation, compliance queries, which we see from auditors. And, and the most important element, I believe, is the inability to flag delays or issues earlier. How are we actually empowering our scientists at the bench as and when they're looking at experiments or doing this, getting to know if they're heading in the right direction or the wrong direction so that countermeasures can be put up immediately rather than it going up to the quality process, et cetera, and then getting these issues rectified. So there should be a real time QC happening as and when our scientists are actually running these experiments at the bench level, and, and which ultimately basically leads to loss of productivity overall. One specific example, uh, which I wanted to talk today was specifically how, how the biopharma, the biosimilars industry is, is getting up more towards uh, industry 4.0, which is definitely a big vision towards smart factories, process automations, et cetera. 
So allow me some time to dig deeper into some of these visions of what's really possible today in an industry 4.0 perspective when we keep the lens of the pharma or the biopharma industries uh, in place over here. Smart factories, uh, the broad definition of smart manufacturing, it, it basically covers many different technologies, but there are commonalities across industries, including interoperable systems, multi-scale dynamic modeling, intelligent automation, we heard from Dr. Sulekshan Jain on, on, on cyber security, how important this is going to be, especially as we're adapting uh, more cloud technologies coming up, network sensors, digitalized manufacturing fact, uh, facilities. And, and there would be a continuous collection and sharing of data through all these connected machines, devices, and production systems. Process automation, another key element of it, right? So it, it basically refers to the use of digital technology to perform a process or a set of processes in order to accomplish a workflow or a function. Again, a wide variety of business processes and activities can be automated, or, or more often they can be partially automated with strategic human interventions at the point of workflow. So absolutely right. We are not looking at eliminating workflow uh, manpower from this to going to digitalization, but how can we make it more efficient and productive in order for them to get their work done? Real-time data to ensure quality. Again, this has been a deep understanding of some of the critical parameters impacting our product quality, uh, which basically goes down in terms of development activities and a combination of how well we understand the process parameters over here. Efficiency through quality by design, QBD. Uh, it's, I think it, it defines, starts off with defining predefined objectives and emphasis on product and process understanding. So based on sound science and quality risk management, we would be able to achieve this. And, and as you would see from the slide, uh, there is, a maturity model of digital, which is basically mimicking how this would look in from an automation world, starting off from manual, automate, parallelize, simulate, which basically gets into uh, AI, ML, uh, things of what we are talking about. Very similar on the digital maturity model. How are we getting connected systems together, integrating equipments, applying this content, analyzing, and then predicting so that we are able to learn from our previous experience what's going to happen tomorrow. The last part which I wanted to cover is, I think no digitalization is successful if it does not solve the customer business challenges, right? So, and, and when we think of this uh, from a customer lens perspective, these are innovations, basically getting much more productivity, getting out newer and better products uh, for, for our customers, speed in terms of efficiency, how quickly can we get into the market and get this data communicated across, risk management, extremely critical element for us. Uh, both from a compliance perspective, data integrity and quality, as well as risk management from a change management perspective, because adapting digitalization from something which I've been used to doing in a single way is not easy when we move out to a digital world. So how can I ensure that my employees, my organizations, et cetera, are also adapting a change management process uh, in these side of things, which eventually leads us to insights, which is the last element um, using of AI, ML or simulation tools based on all the data uh, which we've collected. So definitely the digital era is revolutionizing the pharmaceutical industry's approach and breaking down the silos between each department and ensuring that best practices are adopted, not just within the organization, but even from the industry perspective are brought into these organizations so that we can reduce cost, accelerate time to market, get the peak sales while reducing the risk and value on this. And, and one of the things which we wanted to share today was one of the success stories of, of working with Moderna uh, in this entire digital transformation. And Moderna right now uh, has been on the promise of an mRNA vaccine, as we all know. So at Moderna, building a digital biotech is a foundation component of who they are and a key enabler of what they're trying to accomplish. So they enable digitalization as a complete organization strategy. Uh, Moderna has a well thought out digital transformation strategy, which IDBS supports. Uh, this case by Moderna, AWS and IDBS goes into the significant details right from the way of starting from the vision, approach to embedding digital technology and the use of complexity augmented data analysis and how they've incorporated automation within the business process. Among the many technologies which Moderna used, IDBS did support the use of re research engine uh, digitization as well as the development engine digitization. Uh, they decided to uh, deploy an electronic lab notebook uh, to streamline and track experiments in a very standardized searchable way. And Moderna chose IDBS primarily uh, for its modern design, simplicity, 
usability, workflow capabilities, and things like e-signature and reporting. Uh, and, and the cloud platform primarily enabled Moderna uh, in various aspects of the business, right? From experiment management, technical development, process development, and more importantly, analytical development. And what is primarily led towards is, is basically ensuring that Moderna is being able to make faster decisions with information they can trust, accelerate the ability to share and collaborate of this. And a detailed link to this case study uh, 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 could be provided uh, at request or is also available on our website. And, and just a small slide on IDBS, uh, I'm not sure how much of uh, you would be aware of it. We've been uh, in this journey of life science digitalization or informatics for over the last uh, 30 years, uh, building software solutions uh, for the entire spectrum of research and development organization. Uh, we are proud to be working with the top 22 out of 25 pharma companies globally. And we are part of the larger ecosystem of Danha, which acquired IDBS in 2017. And, and from the various names who belong to this family are SciX, Leica Microsystem, Molecular Devices, Paul Corporation, uh, Cytiva. And, and we are in the midst of also supporting a lot of vaccine manufacturers uh, in India today uh, through our operating companies and, and providing diagnostic solutions through uh, our other platforms such as Safid and Beckman Coulter Diagnostics uh, to the patient uh, at the whole. So, and, and primarily our success is not about cloud technology or the length of time we have been serving the life science industry, but it's mainly about how we've helped our customers on the digital transformation journey. So it's primarily a partnership and a journey which both of us embark on. And, and this portfolio is basically spanning all the way from research uh, to clinical manufacturing, primarily it to order to improve the lab efficiency as well as foster collaboration among various departments in the organization. Uh, and right from research, which would need a non-GXP environment to early development and late development, which would need a GLP and GMP environment and making that successful handshake or transfer into commercialization or core manufacturing. And, and solutions start from right away from molecular biology or a full inbuilt uh, out of the box template coming in from bioprocess development or bioanalytical through our Polar products. So at the end, we want to give data to provide insights that speed up decisions, making and identify operational inefficiencies extremely faster so that decisions can be made. And with that, I just have a video uh, to be shared about IDBS as a company. And please feel free to listen. Hello, Consumer goods, food and beverage, and biopharmaceutical development. Since 1989, IDBS has supported innovation in the industries with premium digital solutions for research and development, accelerating discovery through streamlined workflows, increased integration of instruments, processes, and data, and shorter reporting cycles for strategic insight. For decades, we've been continuously customized and improved our solutions together with our customers. Reforming legacy electronic laboratory notebooks with the ability to effectively assist, store, share, and quality control research data. We think in conventional means it identifies why it is solutions to capture, retain, contextualize, and leverage previously assigned data. From hundreds, hundreds of analog instruments, reinventing the complete digital ecosystem of modern science by providing a cloud platform with easily accessible contextualized high-quality data to accelerate production. We're dedicated to continue this journey towards the next generation of software solutions for research and development. Together with our ancestors, we are determined to lead the way in the pursuit of digital excellence in the art of scientific discovery. So with that, I'm on my last slide. So feel free to contact us at india at idbs.com. We do have a virtual booth and our experts uh, uh, are available to answer any of the questions you may have on the presentation today, as well as talk to you on how we see digital transformation with our customers over here in India. Uh, thank you.
thank you thank you mr manish for that nice presentation as the industry is going for 4.0 we need uh, digital mature, maturity and automation maturity models like this thanks a lot for it i would like to call upon dr ravi gupta sir uh, uh, please uh, give away uh, awards for our dignitaries uh, mr uh, dara patel the secretary general of idma and mr sudarshan jain uh, from ipa i uh, call upon uh, dr ravi gupta uh, it's our uh, pleasure to announce uh, parman leadership awards for excellence and uh, we uh, are honored to uh, present it to shri uh, Dara Patel Ji, who is the Secretary General of Indian Drug Manufacturer Association, for uh, rising uh, to this occasion uh, of this uh, crisis and helping this uh, pharma industry to uh, serve this uh, community in a, a big, big way. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Honor to be uh, part of your team. Thank you. Thank you so much. and to uh, shri uh, sudarshan jain ji who is uh, secretary general of india uh, pharmaceutical and alliance and general advisor of apex partners again uh, for the pharma ship leader award and uh, the role of uh, your association and uh, particularly uh, you in developing industry and uh, government collaborations and the private sector collaborations for uh, rising in this occasion of crisis is uh, commendable and uh, we are honored to have you uh, with us congratulations sir prashant ji and uh, it, uh, we are uh, presenting a uh, certificate of uh, participation to uh, uh, manish uh, manik chand who is a commercial director of idbs for sharing valuable inputs and expertise at pharma leadership summit thank you uh, manish uh, uh, ravi sir for the same please thank you so much <clears throat> pratibha over to you pratibha uh, you are on uh, the mute i think uh, pratibha brand mute so uh, with the uh, pratibha may uh, i mean audible i think uh, some uh, net issue uh, so uh, in india is like uh, still having a digital uh, issues and uh, connectivity issues so i must uh, thank our speakers of the inaugural session dara patel ji sudarshan jain ji and manish ji for joining us and uh, thank you all our esteemed delegates for uh, joining us uh, in a big big uh, way at the inaugural session and uh, we had uh, great uh, thoughts uh, expressed and uh, let me uh, request uh, pratibha to uh, uh, give the closing remarks and close the session thanks a lot sir, sir for that uh, thanks a lot to all the eminent speakers who have joined in, uh, in the morning for the inaugural session we have started in a very good note with two industry leaders uh, giving us their insights and uh, also to mr manish thanks a lot for joining in and uh, i would like to recommend all the viewers who are watching us in the 3d virtual platform please join in and give us a lot of suggestions a lot of questions in the panel we have a great uh, panel coming in in the last uh, in the next two days uh, today and tomorrow we have 10 sessions please be uh, free and just uh, ask us more questions to our experts who are joining in from the pharma industry thanks a lot once again to all the uh, eminent uh, speakers uh, who had joined in for us in the inaugural session of pharma leadership summit thanks a lot thank you namaskar sir thank you manish thank you sir thank you sir uh, thank you very much thank you